how we do this, we are the truest, got these fangs super sharp, yo shit toothless, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish, in the graveyard, acting foolish, finna dance with the devil to no music, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Ghoulish. I am Max Booth, an undead host. And on today's program, I am continuing what I introduced last week. A little mini episode type of thing. Well, it's just me, Max Booth, an undead host. Well, it's no guest. It's just me. In a little mini episode, I am calling Ghoul Talk. Now, I'm doing something a little bit different than last time because, for those who do not know, for those who are only listening to this episode, I am recording it on a camera. And I'm going to upload the video of this episode to YouTube. Now, that's YouTube.com, which means I am not going to edit any of this this is just the this is what you get folks this is a ghoul after dark which would be milning i guess that that, that expression makes no sense to me it is wednesday may 5th 2022 uh, last weekend april 30th and may 1st was the Billy first ghoulish book festival in downtown san antonio Myself and my partner, Lily Michelle, we had announced it last October, a little th event that we were hosting, and uh, it finally happened this weekend. Last weekend, I should say. And you know what? I think it went pretty good. If you'd asked me last Friday if I would ever consider doing one of these again, I would have said, hell no. Absolutely not a fucking chance. But if you would ask me now, I would say I've already uh, we've already begun planning the next one. Mill news on that soon, maybe I don't know. We haven't locked down the venue again yet, but we'll definitely plan on trying because it was a success. It was a fucking overwhelming success, and I am just baffled at how well everything went. It. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, there's nothing to even complain about, really. Nothing bad happened. And that makes me a little bit consumed because usually at least one bad thing happens, but nothing this time. That when we set out, to, when Lily and I set out to do this convention, we had specific things we hoped to accomplish. Something that we've seen, at, something we hope to see at different uh, conventions we have attended, but usually it didn't happen. That's kind of why we be, tried doing Ghoulish Book Fest, because we wanted to do a few things differently, hoping we would see a different outcome than what we usually see as uh, vendor tables at different fests. And the main thing is attracting fans of the genre, not just writers, but fans of the genre, people who just like to read. Because usually at these conventions, the only people you see are those also selling books, or those hoping one day to sell books, right? So the goal should always be, and this is true for just all of small press, the goal is to find those who only read and don't write. And by golly, <laughs> by golly, I think we did it. Because, yeah, you had to buy a badge to, like, see the panels and listen to the, the live readings, but the bookshop section of the fest, that was free to the public. And we spent almost like a whole fucking month advertising this fest all throughout Central Texas, all throughout downtown San Antonio, 
all through um, San Melcos, a little bit in New Braunfels, a little bit in Austin. Not as much as Austin I want as I wanted to, mostly because the day we drove down to Austin, <laughs> it was a little bit late in the day, and a lot of the places we wanted to hit up were already closed. I don't know if you've ever been to Austin, folks, but driving in that city is a fucking nightmare, and I do not recommend it to anybody. It, quite frankly, sucks. But regardless of that, it, it, I mean, it was, people came. A lot of people came. I have no idea how many people came. If I had to guess, a couple hundred throughout Saturday and Sunday. We never hit a point where it was like too many people to even walk around. But we didn't have many dead times. Like, it was a steady stream of people coming in. And the people who did come in, they came to specifically buy books. And buy books they did. They it, Most people who came in bought several books from every fucking table in the bookshop. It was unusual from previous experience. I mean... I know I, this. I'm just beginning this episode by just bragging... God damn, man. I think maybe I, I'm allowed to brag because we fucking did it. Ghoulish Book Fest 2022 was a success. And um, if you missed it, that's okay. Things happen. We did recall the audio for each of the panels that happened. I've already uploaded one panel. The Hull Cartoons of All Youth panel. That's on the Ghoulish Pod website, the feed. So go and download Ghoulish Pod just the ghoulish podcast see this is something i won't be able to edit out but that's okay and you can listen to that episode already that features uh, andrew hillbilt lj joseph susan snydel victoria nations and miguel miles talking about the spooky uh, cartoons that we watched as kids and that's only one panel we recorded all of them i don't know yet if i can use each recording on the podcast. I haven't listened to them yet. It's possible some of the audio quality won't be up to snuff and I just won't be able to use it. But if I'm able to, I mean, you have lots of episodes to look filled to. You have one about uh, cryptids, uh, hill screenplays, small towns, DIY who like independent ways to make yourself prominent in the genre, I guess. Um, a crime panel, urban legends, we have also one about comic books, fake monsters, and movies that never happened. So hopefully the recordings on all of those sound great. No promises. Additionally, we had live readings throughout the convention, and I recorded those on my camera, the same camera I'm recording the episode of this podcast on. And I have been uploading those to the YouTube channel there's uh, already mo uh, at least half of them up on YouTube as I say this now. I mean, go on over to my YouTube channel. If you are not already watching this on YouTube, uh, I will have a link to the channel on the podcast show notes. I mean, there's already readings from Jay Wilbill, John Baltus Bilgel, Ryan C. Bradley, L.J. Joseph, Johnny C Compton, Brian Asman, Tom, no, 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 Lil Hightower, Jessica Leonard, and ma, 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 John C. Fostel, Cynthia Paleo, Susan Snydel, and Dangel Slato. All those are already up on the YouTube channel. Coming soon on the channel, you will find readings from Tom Diddy, C.S. Humble, Lewis Mangum, Shane McKenzie, Andrew Hillbilt, and myself. I also did a reading. I read from a book called It Eats Dick, which I, <laughs> which I am collaborating with uh, on with Andrew. It's a really exciting book. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to win many prestigious awards. Now I'm going to drink coffee into my mouth. Ah, that's the good stuff. I'm drinking from a from a Franken Bones cup I got from a, I think it's called Bones Coffee, perhaps. I'm not exactly positive. The fest was great, folks. There's not a lot I can say about it. I mean, everything went great. We had a Mothman contest. One person ended, mostly due, I think, to my own inability to really milk it ahead of time with everything else going on the contest kind of slipped my attention but brian asman did make a costume 
at the convention. It was great. I'm sure if you go over to his Twiddle feed, I think it's The Brian Asman, you can find a photo of it. Really great. I'm also going to post a photo in the newsletter this weekend, and that you can find that at um, pmmpnews.com, or you can go to theghoulishtimes.substack.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Also going to be a link to it in the uh, show notes of both the YouTube video and the podcasts. So don't uh, blame me. If you were watching this right now, I will show you the uh, badge, my badge. Look at that. Ghoulish Book Fest, Max Booth the Thrilled Host. Ghoulish Books. Pretty cool. We have so many of these left over, so if we do a second one of these, don't even need to buy badges. That's pretty exciting. I hope to do a second one, too. That's actually one of the questions from uh, Patreon. Because when I do these uh, ghoul talk episodes, I do accept uh, questions over on Patreon, and I answer them. So one of them was from Thomas Joyce, who says, The Ghoulish Book Fest looks like a great success. That's, that's, that's what I've fucking been saying. But it also looks like a lot of book. What are your thoughts on doing it again? I've already answered that, Thomas. Haven't you been listening? I guess not. This is not a live podcast. It's not a live YouTube stream. My thoughts, all. No, I hope to do it again. I hope we get the same discounted rate from the venue we had. If we do, hell yeah, we are absolutely going to do this again. I have a feeling the um, to get a vendor table is probably going to be in pretty high demand because everybody sold a lot. Most of the, the vendors at the event, they came up and told us this was either the best they have ever sold at any event or the second best. And that's fucking crazy to me. We've never done one of these before. And it just had that big of a tune around. Someone told me, I won't say who, that the most they had ever sold at one convention was 200 books. And that was at the um, um, Brian Keane's AuthorCon earlier this year. The second best they had ever sold was 50 books. Until Ghoulish Book Fest, where they sold 82 fucking books. Not too shabby. I'm not positive how many copies, uh, how many books we sold personally at the Ghoulish Books table. Because I was running up and down the whole fucking time. I ended up running 20, not running, walking 28 uh, miles according to my Fitbit, over 60,000 steps that weekend. But uh, Lily was mostly manning the table while I uh, was just running around like a maniac, a sweaty maniac. And we have, uh, you know, we have notes taken down, tally milks of all the books we sold, but we haven't gotten to it yet. I know just from credit and debit card sales we made over two thousand dollars this weekend from selling books alone i don't know about cash though um it's possible it was mill i haven't had time to really uh, go into the books yet i'm excited to do that my house is a mess at the moment it's no nothing but st stacks of boxes and books and all that we all at the point where we just have no room in this house to move Especially with all the stuff we bought for the fest, like the sandwich signs and the various other things. Honestly, I wish we could have filled a rent in the office because we just don't have any dang room in this house anymore. It's getting out of hand. But I'm uh, well, not quite uh, at the point where we can have filled something like that. Maybe in the future, I don't know. The other question we have on Patreon says, um, I read, uh, this is from, I'm not sure you say this guy's name, Milmiadon. I, I'm sure I said that wrong, I apologize. I read on the ghoulish Discord something you said about when and how you were able to unleash your creative process. I don't remember specifically what it was, but it was something about not taking yourself too seriously and not compelling your work to others. My question is, how did you kill that critic inside you? Knives? Poison? Piano while? Oh, if you didn't kill it, is it tied up in your basement and you go down the left of sunset and tilt your it for kicks? Well, we don't have a basement. We don't have a piano. We have knives, knives, we have uh, poison, but I haven't used that to kill anyone. 
in a long time? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I um, I don't think I've ever compiled my own um, writing to other people besides myself. Um, usually the thing I am writing now, any time, in, 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 at any point in time, the, the, the book, the project I am looking on presently, I am looking on it because I think it's the coolest thing in the universe. And I'm excited to share it with somebody. But sometimes when I look back on projects I do, it does it they don't have that same it doesn't have that same effect on me. Like a few of my old books, like Toxicity, Toxicity, The Mind is a Razor Blade, those two specifically, I don't think they all as good as they could be. I wrote them when I was super young. And I probably need to rewrite both of them heavily before I ever consider reprinting them again, which is something I want to do eventually, just it's not a lot of time to look at those presently. I think that answer, I, I don't even think it answered the question, but it, it answered it enough for me. And these were mini episodes, so I'm moving on. I hope that helps somehow. Um, I don't think it did though, and I apologize. One th cool thing about the fest is seeing, like, app now that it's over with, seeing photographs that people keep posting of all the books they buy. It's really exciting to me to, to see that. It's like a rush of adrenaline I'm receiving. Just because I've been doing fest since 2011. 2012, 2012. And that is something you always see happen after the fest. It's something I've done myself many times. You post a photo of the books you bought. And... Now people do that about the fest that we launched. That's pretty cool. So I thought I would share the um, the books that I picked up at the Ghoulish Book Fest. I will also be showing them on to the video. So Phil step, I got a zine that Eve Helms made called Strange Antonio. She did a shit ton of research into San Antonio and made a spooky zine about it. I believe she's going to sell some online, so look her up on Twiddle. Her name is Eve Helms. I don't know what her uh, account handle is. I'm sure you can find you can find her. Pretty freaking cool. I'm excited to read this. I've read a little bit of it already. It's, it's really cool and interesting. I also got The Dead Inside, an anthology. Edited by Ubul, Hightail, and Sandra Rutten. Rutten? I think Rutten, probably. This is... An anthology. It's called The Dead Inside. It's about identity. That it sounds pretty exciting. And, you know, I like everything Little High Tile is involved in. It's a nice thick paperback. I haven't r read an anthology in a long time that I wasn't the one publishing. So I'm excited to dig into this. I also got a book by my really good friend, Jay Wilburn, called Read, Write, Edit, Play, Repeat, Volume 1. So he has a Twitch stream, Jay does, and on this Twitch, he he writes Schilt Strillies live for an audience, which is something insane people do. So he's complete, He's uh, compiled a volume of those Strillies into a book. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading this. I love Jay. He's a great friend of mine. I also got this giant fucking book, Haven, by Tom Deedy. He was a sponsor of the event actually. He was the back cover sponsor of the program and he also had a table and I bought Haven. I've been seeing this book around for a few yields now and I've been wanting to get it and I finally did. I didn't realize how long it was. Look at that. This is a book I believe about, it is about a small town. There's no I believe it is. It is because he was on the small town panel I moderated at the fest and we specifically talked about Haven and the small towns in it. The other book I got was Impossible James by Dangel Sladle. Dangel actually stayed at my house this last weekend. And uh, I got a copy of his book. We kind of traded. I gave him a copy of my book, Maggot Screaming. He gave me a book of Impossible James. He even signed it. What did he say? Oh, yes. Thanks for letting me piss in your sink. And then in parentheses... Hopefully you read this after I leave. <laughs> I've actually am about I'm on chapter twenty seven of the book. There's no page in emeralds, so I don't know what page I'm on, but it's really funny. I love Dangel Sladel's writing. I'm enjoying it. 
I am also editing, in the process of editing the book of his, I am publishing through my press, Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, aka Ghoulish Books. But this is just a strict PMMP book. It's not a ghoulish book. I am editing his new book, Moonfellows, which is about the secret history of the original moon landing that nobody wants you to know about. It's really funny. You can pre-order that right now by going on over to pulpetualpublishing.com. Pulpetualpublishing.com. God damn. I've also received a few ALCs in the mail recently, and I will show those off now. Because that is something I've seen people do on YouTube. And now I am recording this on YouTube. I don't make the rules. I just obey them. I am a good citizen. So I got a copy of Teen Angel by Bud Smith. This is the second time I've been mailed this book. I've already read it, and I loved it. I am... Oh, actually, I, they probably mailed it to me again because they emailed me saying, Hey, are we going to set up this uh, interview with Bud Smith on the podcast? And then because of all the stuff I've been doing with the fest, I did not respond. So I need to respond because I want Bud Smith on the podcast. I've read Teen Angel already. I even gave my copy to somebody else to read because I think he would like it. It's basically like a Bonnie and Clyde type of book. These two teenagers, they fall in love and commit crimes and go on the run. Super good. I loved it. I don't know what to do with this copy now. I also received The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. I know nothing about this book, but I am a huge fan of Andy Davidson. He wrote, um, fuck, what's the title? Hold on. Okay. He wrote In the Valley of the Sun, which is a super great vampire novel. Big fan of that book. He also wrote The Boatman's Dirtle, which uh, is also great. This Andy Davidson writes so well. He reminds me a bit of uh, like Stephen Graham Jones and William Gay. Big fan of his book. So excited to read The Hollow Kind. And the last ALC... No, oh, I've received two more, actually. I also got Help Meet by Nathan Ruthnan. I apologize if I have uh, mispronounced his name. I believe I am going to get him on the podcast. I have no idea what this book is about, but it looks great. I've told awesome things about it. And the last one I received was uh, Mola by Jonathan Jans. Because it's been a long time coming. I'm finally getting Jonathan on the Ghoulish podcast. And I'm really excited. First, I am going to read Melda, which I believe is coming out through Ulfling Publications as a limited edition. And then I will get a podcast scheduled with them and we will talk about something. I don't know yet. I don't, you know, I have a little stack of books I guess I could show. Before the book fest... Uh, my library was having one of those uh, book sales, you know, it's like fucking 25 cents a book, and I found some pretty good ones, and since I'm doing a YouTube channel now, a YouTube show, a YouTube version of the podcast, I could show those off, right? That's something you would like? Okay, so I got a copy of a book that people keep telling me is probably the best book of all time, Lonesome Dove, it's a pretty thick paperback, so might, uh re-download Red Dead Redemption 2 to play as I read this one. I don't know. I got a copy of Ten of French's The Likeness, which I believe I have already, but I wasn't positive enough to not buy it again. I got a copy of The Men Who Still at Goats by John Ronson. Have the fuck. <laughs> I've seen the movie adaptation of this. Haven't read the book, but I have read a few of the John Ronson's John Ronsons? Did I call him Ron Johnson? Jesus Christ. Um, a few, I've read a few other John Ronson books. There was one called something like You've Been Publicly Shamed. So You've Been Publicly Shamed. That's a fucking fascinating book that I think anybody in the modern age needs to read. It should be required reading. I, read, I got Kindred by Octavia Butler. I've actually read this before, but it's been a while. It's a great book. Highly recommended. I got Killers of the Flower Moon by David Grant. I know Scorsese is about to wrap, or already wrapped, a film adaptation of this. And I'm super excited because my boy Pat Healy's in it. And if Pat Healy's in the movie, I will watch it. But let's be honest, it's Scorsese. I'm just going to watch it anyway. It is about the, the birth of the FBI. 
<laughs> so I imagine there's like there's one lady really pregnant and she you know she spreads the legs as you do and this man this this complete man in a slimy black suit just comes out of it and they go what do you want to name this baby and she goes FBI that was stupid but I can't edit this out I got the Hellfile Club by Peter Straub I don't know what this is about but it's Peter Straub so you have to buy it when you see his name I got a copy of Rant by Chuck Palahniuk this is, I think, the filled copy of this book I have. I keep buying it. I don't know why. I guess I love it. Um, I also got this huge held back collection, Transgressions, edited by Ed McBain. It has a, it's a collection of ten novellas, including a book by Stephen King. Which one is it? I know. One second. One fucking second. I think... Oh, I have the fucking T.O. scene in front of me. Oh, it's that The Things They Left Behind by Stephen King, which I believe is that fucking 9-11 novelette. Not a really good story. I don't know why this is in this. But the rest of the authors, like Donald Westlake, uh, Joyce, Carol Oates, um, Jeffrey Devil, Lawrence Block, Sheldon McCrum, Walter Mosley... Well, it's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, that's it. That's all I got. This has been an episode of Ghoul Talk. Oh, wait. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. I have some books to show you. Ethel books. Books I've written and books I've published. So, because this is a YouTube show, I'm going to show you some books that I have recently published and I hope you get. So, this is Leech by John C. Fostrell. Really excited. John was at the Ghoulish Book Fest promoting this book. He did a reading. He did some panels. It's a crime cosmical hybrid. If you pre-ordered this book already from Ghoulish Books, we will be mailing them out this Friday. We will be slightly behind because of the fest. I apologize about that. But now we are not doing a fest. The fest is over with. We will be mailing these out on Friday. I promise. Also... Little High Tile was at the fest. Below, this came out a couple months ago. Feeling exciting. Oh, there's some fucking applesauce on or something on the back of this. Pretty gross. I don't know what that was. I promise that all copies have uh, sticky stuff on them. Below is a Mothman creature feature book. Feeling intense. This book is fucking blowing up, selling like nothing else we've ever published before. I'm excited to see where this one's going. I'm excited to see where all the books are going. And also, to end this, my new novel, Maggot Screaming, is out now. You can buy a signed copy at ghoulishbooks.com. It's about... I'll just read the uh, synopsis. <clears throat> On a hot summer weekend in San Antonio, Texas, a father and son bond after discovering three impossible corpses buried in the backyard. Maggot Screaming. If you live in the Houston area, next Friday, Friday the 13th, May 1-3, I will be doing a, a reading slash signing slash hosting of a double feature of Frank Hannon Lonald's Basket Case and Brain Damage at the Katy, Texas Alamo Draft House. Not many tickets left. I recommend going over to the Houston Alamo website and getting a ticket. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be reading from Maggot Screaming. I might hand out actual maggots to the audience so they can eat. Don't know yet if I'm allowed to do that. You might. I might kill someone and I would go to prison. I'm going to have to ask my attorney about that one. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoy the podcast. I hope this video added something extra for you. Let me know in the fucking comments if you were watching this, if this was something you enjoyed, if you want to keep seeing me do videos. Otherwise, I'm just going to go back to the audio only, which is what I prefer because I am really nervous knowing people are watching me and the things I do with my body.